Uh, first of all, please turn your phones off and put our vibrator or so that we don't get uh, 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 ringing tones in the middle of this talk. Uh, I'm Arik Arabikian, I work in the Parsons, and I would like to welcome you to Parsons. And this is uh, AESS, uh, one of our monthly lectures, different topics. Uh, we have a very exciting one today. But before getting to that, there are a few announcements I'd like to make. Uh, so, this uh, couple of weeks from now, August 13th, uh, we have our summer garden party. Uh, it's not in the same place, so you need to advance RSVP. Uh, and please, RSVP is important for our uh, all of our activities, especially like lectures because space is limited, and uh, garden party also is space is limited. Uh, you can RSVP, and then we will send you the address where it is. You can come. It's going to be fun. Every year we're having one, and everyone enjoys it. their time there. It's, uh, uh, good food, drinks, and good company that you guys can enjoy. It. Uh, uh, we're not going to have a lecture in August because everyone is pretty much off on vacation and so on. Uh, but we'll line up uh, future lectures. Uh, on September 29, we're going to have a panel of three people from LA Metro. They're going to be talking about projects going on right now in the downtown, Santa Monica, and all that, and what's the future uh, plans they have in mind, what they're planning to do, which I think will be interested because all of us live in this city and would like to have public transportation, which really works. So Metro will talk about that. October is still like we're debating between two subjects, so I'm not going to announce anything yet before it's finalized. And uh, November, we're going to have uh, one about uh, artificial intelligence. Now, as you know, that's becoming a very hot item, and uh, uh, that's uh, it's a professor from uh, an Armenian professor from USC who's going to be talking about uh, that uh, artificial intelligence, and we can ask all the questions from him. Uh, we would like to hear from you what other topics you want to see. I know that people have made some requests, uh, like driverless cars and uh, some other things, but we're not able to find a good speaker. So. Uh, if you yourself are willing to talk, or you know somebody that can talk about an interesting subject, uh, please let us know, and we can work it out. Then just uh, see me or any of our board members here, and we can arrange something. Uh, talking about uh, need help, we're a volunteer organization, and we need your help. Uh, and we would like to have more members, so we can have more activities planned. We have committees who do different kind of work, like we have an energy committee. Uh, which uh, does some work, uh, works with Armia, some of them were there in renewable energy, some work in uh, Southern California Edison, some others are different businesses, some are uh, solar, uh, others are in a hydro. So we have groups like that, if you're interested, you can join them. Or there's a computer group that you guys can join. Uh, environmental, we call Green Armia, that's another group that's quite active that you can join. So uh, we have applications outside, uh, I'll encourage you to fill out the application, uh, and uh, become a member. If you like, you can go to our website. It's AESA.org, and pay by the PayPal and uh, fill out the application there. That's enough for, I guess, uh, for our announcements. Uh, today we have, a, as you probably have seen, it's about renewable energy, and we have a distinguished guest from Armenia, and she came here to give a lecture, and you will have the, 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 more, the, the most expert in renewable energy in Armenia talking with you about the renewable energy, and she can answer any questions that you have in that arena. Uh, she's the director of uh, R2E2. Now, this is not from Star Wars or anything. It's <laughs> <laughs> renewable Resources and Energy Efficiency. So that's R2E2. They have a very good website. I think she will put it at the end. You can see that. It's full of resources. Is there any kind of information you want, uh, it's there. And so Tamara, Tamara has been a, a director since the beginning of that, which is uh, it's their 10th year now. And uh, you probably heard a lot about different institutes in Armenia. They're not efficient. They're not this. I kind of guarantee you, I've been there. I've seen their work. I say only about like maybe two or three institutes that I can really say they're really doing a good job. Tamara's R2E2 is one of them, that they really do a good job. Uh, and. Uh, Work that they do is very important. It's a pretty much national security issue because Armenia needs to have natural resources and use the natural resources for uh, energy. And they're not only doing scientific work, but it's also a national security type work. With that, I'd like to turn it to Tamara, which will tell you all about the uh, renewable energy. Tamara,
Sorry for this nice presentation of Green and our farm. So um, uh, I will uh, tell you about our farm activities of our people and energy sector of Armenia, renewable energy in Armenia, and scaling up renewable energy in Armenia, which is currently is uh, going on. And then we can have questions and answers. But if you have some questions during presentations, like for clarification or uh, due to my English, so just talk me and ask these questions. And, um, we can go then. So as Eric mentioned, we were established 10 years ago. And our main uh, objective is to facilitate investment in uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency area. Uh, which uh, will follow our mission to promote energy security of the country. So we have different funding sources and uh, implemented uh, more than 40 million uh, project, dollar project. Uh, but we have also uh, sustainable renewable uh, energy or energy efficiency revolving fund for 10 million dollar, which allows us to finance project, to get repayments, and then allocate for new projects. So. Uh, we started in 2006, and so far we don't have any non-payment uh, issue with this fund. So activities of the fund uh, in, during the last 10 years uh, include the, in renewable energy, small hydropower plant uh, development and financing of 26 small hydropower plant construction. Uh, we implemented a big project and allowed to uh, uh, more than hundred schools uh, in different regions of Armenia, mainly out, out of Yerevan, to have their safe boiler houses and uh, heating system, and energy efficient heating systems. Uh, we financed through the commercial banks uh, residential uh, residential heating to improve also heating options and uh, to reduce number of accidents, poisoning and uh, fires, etc. In uh, multi departmental buildings. Uh, currently, we do energy efficiency financing in public buildings. Uh, we started in 2012, and now we have about 100 projects implemented in hospitals, schools, kindergartens, municipality buildings, street lighting systems, even jails, prisons, uh, etc. Theaters, libraries, so many diff different projects. And uh, I want to say about current project we are working on. This is uh, solar PV uh, preparation of large scale solar PV uh, investments. And uh, we plan to have uh, 50 megawatt solar PV plants in Armenia in uh, coming two years. Um, geothermal energy, we are now doing expert drilling in one of the sites. And these days, I mean, uh, the drilling uh, works are ongoing there. And also training, capacity building activities, pu public awareness and education, and international um, and, uh, cooperation is part of our everyday uh, work. So, um, these are directions we work, and we will work uh, on this uh, for coming next years. And uh, we are open to cooperate with all of you or who is interested in any other direction. So we help the government to prepare strategy documents on renewable energy and energy efficiency area. We work on improvement of legal regulatory uh, documents uh, to enable uh, this area to scale up and uh, remove barriers for investors. Uh, we do capacity building and sometimes sometime, uh, R&D uh, communication or facilitate it is uh, a very important area for us. Of course, financing of investment through some kind of innovative financing options because we are not bank, but we want to create uh, conditions for financial sector, commercial banks to come in, into this area and uh, increase the, the potential and uh, generation from the, uh, renewable energy. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, international cooperation. We are very, um, um, we have very good uh, cooperation with all international financing and uh, other institutions in Armenia. And uh, at the same time, we are working with Energy Community Europe. We are observer there. 
I am also a member of Climate Investment Fund Committee, which is also very important. Uh, it is Washington DC based uh, institutions, uh, which is uh, funding uh, facility for billion of renewable energy and uh, green energy project. So um, I want to speak a little bit, uh, uh, of course, about overall energy sector, but uh, I think uh, it's better to present through some short movie, which is about 12 to 13 minutes. I hope the link will work. The song Yerevanjo, composed by Yerevan-based modern jazz musician Levan Malkhazian. <coughs> this piece is very much in harmony with the panorama of Armenia's capital, a modern European city which is becoming lighter every day. These people, spending their evening in Yerevan, belong to the generation that experienced an energy crisis in the recent past. It is now hard to imagine that, barely 20 years ago, Yerevan and the whole country were in the nightmare of darkness. The future of energy, the energy of the future. The darkness, the cold, and the poverty, which subsequently became known as the blockade and energy crisis, followed the collapse of the Red Empire and the proclamation of the Third Armenian Republic. They were preceded by the disastrous earthquake of 1988, Armenia's isolation by two neighboring states after the Nagorno-Karabakh War. This was Yerevan on the eve of the 21st century. Dark apartments, paralyzed transport, searching for a warm space. A struggle that motivated everyday heroism. People using these lamps, which some had kept in their homes from the beginning of the 20th century. Citizens who were better off unearthed those kerosene stoves that were earlier unheard of. Forests were being logged across the country. Centralized heating systems in multi-apartment buildings of the capital city were replaced with wood stoves, homemade devices of the previous century. What was the reason for Armenia, one of the three most powerful energy republics of the Soviet era, plunging into darkness? A country that had been, until recently, not only meeting its own energy demand, but also exporting energy. Soviet Armenia was annually producing 15 billion kilowatts of electricity. History has it that, starting from 1972, Armenia's energy sector transformed the acute deficient into a surplus, exporting electricity and meeting about 20 to 25 percent of aggregate energy system demand in the Transcaucus region. In the years of Soviet rule, Armenia's powerful energy sector rested on five large entities, the Mezamor nuclear power plant, the Yerevan and Harazdan thermal power plants, and the Sevan Harazdan and Borotan hydro power plant cascades. And here they are, the once happy citizens of the Soviet Republic, clueless about what is coming tomorrow. After the earthquake, the operation of the Mezamor nuclear power plant was discontinued due to security reasons. The hydropower plants reduced their output more than fourfold, as their operation depended completely on fuel oil and gas imported from abroad, which was reaching Armenia with interruptions. The country was in economic blockade. The railway was not functioning. The gas main supplying gas to the country frequently exploded. Sevan remained the only reliable source of energy. Armenia was having to consume this unique source of fresh water. After two decades, the country would have to recover the lake by millimeters. The beauty of the Gerama mountain chain became the blood vessel supplying the hydropower plants of the Sevan Harazan Cascade, which were now taking much more water from Lake Sevan and producing twice as much electricity. But still, energy demand exceeded the output. The whole country was receiving energy for one to two hours a day. Armenians learned to meet some basic needs in just this amount of time. Under those circumstances, everyone tried to get power in their own, sometimes creative ways. Electricity losses grew immense. People were unable to pay for the electricity consumed. For people in difficult social conditions, the price of power, which was four kopecks in the Soviet era, had increased exponentially 
the unsparing Soviet consumer had to accept the market economy rules of the game, saving on the one hand and paying diligently on the other. The country had to restore energy security. The energy crisis was a serious challenge posed by independence. Armenia overcame the crisis while in a blockade, overstrained through the hard work of energy experts, extensive financial and human resources costs. Hundreds of thousands immigrated from the country during this period. The new clock started ticking in November 1995. After a break of six and a half years, the government decided to recommission the Armenian nuclear power plant with the invocation by the Patriarch of all Armenians, the efforts of Armenian energy experts, and the support of foreign governments and specialists. It was a milestone for the country, lit by miracle overnight. The nuclear plant <coughs> brought back light and hope, but it was clear that the solution would be a temporary one. It was time to move on. The Armenian government undertook aggressive reforms for modernizing the sector. Yesterday's Soviet citizens were reluctant to learn that electricity is a commodity for which one has to pay. At first, the meters were taken out of the houses. Then came the cunning tricks of rolling the meters back. The system gradually began to collect payments from citizens, which were turning into diligent consumers. Under the rules of the market, the government had already privatized the gas supply system. The Hrazdan Yerevan Cascade of hydropower plants and the thermal power plants. Under private management, the electricity losses were gradually eliminated and the infrastructure was upgraded. The distribution network, which delivered electricity from the producer to the consumers, was privatized. In just a short period of time, system losses were minimized from about half of the supplied electricity to a manageable level, while collections were improved from what was barely 25% to about 100% in the late 1990s. The government, in turn, modernized the high-voltage stations, which remained state-owned by virtue of their strategic importance. Then, Armenia took the first major step aimed at energy security by having the Iran-Armenia gas pipeline built, which, launched in 2009, became an alternative to the gas pipeline coming to Armenia from Russia through the North Caucasus. The thermal power plants were reconstructed and modernized. The Yerevan Thermal Power Plant Combined Cycle Unit became operational in April 2010. Here, modern hardware reduces the cost of energy generation over two and a half fold. A major energy project of the recent past was the full modernization of the fifth unit of the Hrazdan Thermal Power Plant, which had been initiated and stopped back in the Soviet years. It increased the country's electricity output by 271 megawatts. Despite all of this, though, the nuclear power plant remains the bedrock of Armenia's energy system, as it supplies about 32% of electricity consumed in the country. <coughs> Importing nuclear fuel for the nuclear power plant is much easier for a country that is facing a blockade and does not have fossil fuels. Electricity generated at a nuclear power plant costs much less than that generated from natural gas. Armenia cannot forego nuclear energy. Parallel to enhancing security of the existing nuclear power plant, Armenia is getting ready to construct a new nuclear unit. Yervan Zakharyan, the current Minister of Energy, is a member of the crisis management team of the 1990s. In the dark and dim of 1992, he was the Deputy Minister of Energy. He now sees a different set of challenges facing the reformed system. The President of the Republic of Armenia has already approved the energy security concept paper based on which an action plan was developed with a primary focus on renewable energy. Based on it, the Ministry has begun implementing various projects and once they are completed, we will try to attract foreign investors and international organizations. We believe that national energy security can be achieved only by means of developing renewable energy, on which the government and the Ministry are currently focusing their efforts. Clearly, we plan to extend the nuclear plant operation period and to build a new unit by 2026. However, we are obliged, parallel to it, to rely on alternative energy sources, such as our potential for solar, hydro, and wind energy.
to minimize dependency on imported fossil fuels, Armenia is firstly aspiring to make efficient use of the existing hydro energy resources. One quarter of the nation's energy need is met by the two major cascades, Sevan and Boratan. Next to these large entities, small hydropower plants have grown consistently in the last decade. These are now a game changer. Small hydropower plants are currently the most widely used form of renewable energy, accounting for as much as 10% of Armenia's annual energy output. Naira Nahapetyan heads the Association of Small Hydropower Plants. She was one of the first entrepreneurs back in 1996 to take part in the privatization process. She bought and is currently successfully operating a Soviet legacy hydropower plant. We were able to understand that small HPPs are the future of energy. Energy is all about national security. To our joy, we now have 150 HPPs in the network and over 70 under construction. In 2014, their share in total energy will reach 13 to 14 percent. Small hydropower plants create jobs and the rather difficult social conditions of Armenia. The 150 small hydropower plants currently provide about 2,000 jobs. This is the roof of the Armenian Relief Health Center in Yerevan. For four years now, it not only covers the building, but also hosts a photovoltaic power plant that converts the sun's energy to electricity, which is then fed into the distribution network. For a country that annually gets, on average, 288 sunny days, or 2,600 sunny hours, solar energy can become a fully-fledged source of energy, a strategic option for energy independence, says Hamlet Karayan, professor at Yerevan State University. 10 to 15 percent of the energy falling on one hectare can generate one megawatt of capacity. Thus, an area of 300 hectares, which is not really too big, can generate capacity equivalent to that of the nuclear power plant. For Armenia, photovoltaic energy can become the cornerstone of a strategy for energy independence. Any non-conventional source of energy can become a backbone for the country. Professor Miri Janyan, a member of the National Academy of Sciences, discusses Armenia's potential for geothermal energy. Armenia is estimated to be rather rich in overall geothermal resources. We will soon complete the exploration phase, and we are on the threshold of a discovery. Thus, the Armenian sources of alternative energy have been studied, and the potential has been assessed. The time has now come for using them to generate electricity. Because Armenia's efforts of meeting energy demand still depend largely on imports of oil and gas from Russia and Iran, including price fluctuations thereof, which can cause social shocks. Although aggressive reforms drove Armenia out of the crisis in the last 20 years, the situation is still fragile and very sensitive to higher prices of energy imports. Therefore, the energy security imperative remains unaltered. The potential of renewable energy must be utilized to the fullest. understand overall uh, what, what was energy sector in Armenia before crisis, during crisis, and after crisis. So just to mention some numbers on an electricity production, uh, and you can see that uh, so far we have very well balanced energy system because we have a one third from nuclear, one third from uh, uh, hydro and uh, renewable, and one third from uh, gas based plants. Uh, however, for, uh, you can see in, in the pie chart below that uh, for this particular year, these shares are different from uh, capacities, which means that we use more thermal because of the water resources were uh, lower and the uh, nuclear power plant maintenance was longer. So I don't want to like uh, 
go into details, you, the, the presentation will be available, you can explore the, uh, later. Uh, so you can, s just some um, pictures, for example, you can see that uh, fuel for transportation, transport fuel uh, we use is more, may, uh, majority of cars in Armenia, they use a natural gas, which means that we have quite clean transport uh, system. And uh, you can see also that residential uh, consumers are uh, main consumers of electricity. And for heat, we use uh, users of the heat energy are more like the industry. So uh, you, the, the movie, in the movie, you, you've seen that Iran, uh, the, uh, the gas pipeline from Iran, and which is now operational, and we use Iranian and Russian gas, and gas company is the main operator, and they uh, supply to the customers. So let's go to the renewable energy. So why we need renewable energy in Armenia? because uh, we really uh, highly dependent on import. 97% of our primary energy sources are imported, which is really um, makes us very uh, sensitive to this crisis, to the situation. So in Armenia, we don't have our own fossil fuel, so we can develop our own resources. But we have uh, really good renewable energy resources that we have to realize. In Armenia, we have very good uh, regulatory and institutional framework. It is really, uh, it is not mentioned by like me or government. We are, all time we are criticizing. If you find some barrier, we are criticizing, we are trying to help. But if we compare to other countries, we, and in different sectors in Armenia, we really can say that we have quite good regulatory system. And of course, renewable energy will transform the overall economy of Armenia. It is not just energy project or energy development, but also development of the economy. So I try to do, uh, I try to present you some sort of spot analysis for re renewable energy development in Armenia. So what are our strengths? We have renewable resources. We have strong interest of private sector. Uh, we have many private operators of renewable uh, plants, power plants, and also there is a big interest even today. Every day we receive a uh, letter of interest, uh, meetings from investor side. And we have regulatory framework and we have uh, human resources capable to learn and to apply their knowledge. What are weaknesses? The small market, first of all. So big investors, big companies, they don't see really big interest in Armenia. Uh, we have uh, lack of professionals. So we have capable people, but we don't have experience, practical experience in renewable energy application, except may maybe hydro. And of course, we mm, have lack of concessional funding. So uh, our banks mainly give very high interest rates and a very short maturity. Sorry, what does concessional funding mean? Concessional one, uh, like soft loans or long fund, long term funding. Like for uh, renewable energy, you need like seven and more years uh, credits, loans. But in Armenia, it is not possible. Commercial banks provide like two, three years. Uh, there are cases where they receive from international donor organizations for some project, then they uh, give for longer period. So what are opportunities? As I mentioned, uh, the government uh, uh, tries to find uh, investment for, for, for possibilities. And for, first of all, we use public money to do resource assessment, which is uh, very important for investors to reduce their uh, like, uh, first risks as associated with project implementation. For example, for small hydro, we, we our fund has prepared small hydro power plant scheme with uh, many visibility studies, with locations, etc., to help uh, investors to go and uh, just uh, start development of the business plan. Uh, now we do solar, we do geothermal, etc. Uh, another opportunity is sound banking services. So the banking system is quite good in Armenia, and they uh, really operate very well. And 
no issue with the banks, even during financial crisis, uh, nothing happened with the uh, deposits, with the loans, etc. So it is quite good. Um, we have guaranteed offtake or purchase by utilities uh, for 20 years. This is also guaranteed by the law, by the government. Uh, we have bidding tariff for most of the renewable energy technologies. We have, the, the recent news is uh, we have uh, SREP financing. I will talk uh, later about this. This is a special fund which gives uh, uh, soft loans. And also we uh, have increased end user tariff. This is opportunity for investors because uh, if uh, in country average tariff or end user tariff is low, but your tariff to attract investors are high, so um, most likely government will not uh, give this attractive tariff to not increase uh, end users' tariff. But if our, our tariff for end users is already on like higher level, then re uh, scaling up or extension of renewable energy will not have big impact on end users and on the social uh, situation. So what are our threats? Uh, first of all, technology price, if, if it goes up for renewable energy technologies. Uh, regulatory policy changes, if they happen, but so far we don't have any uh, policy change uh, which makes a uh, um, problem for investors. Or uh, So we have tariff increase, we have uh, improvement of legislation, and support to, to investments. And of course, uh, fossil fuel price decrease, which is uh, possible, but I don't think that it is really serious, uh, because maybe for certain periods it will decrease, but overall, uh, I don't see any like a big risk here. So as I mentioned, regulatory framework is good, and it is continuously improved. Um, we have a tariff system, which allows all generation and all distribution companies and uh, participants to have cost reco recovery level. So there is no subsidies provided to the utilities, provided to the generation activities, and also there is no how to say, reduced or um, uh, forced reduction of prices. Um, we have uh, now some kind of, for. Um, some kind of improvement for installation of um, small capacity uh, units, like less than 150 kilowatt capacity. Uh, it is no license, no permit, uh, nothing is required. You can just put your solar or wind or something uh, in your business, in your roof, in your home, and be connected to the uh, grid. So this regulatory is very important. So as I mentioned, uh, the government and low on energy guarantees uh, purchase for 20 years, like PPA for 20 years for renewable energy. Uh, there is an escrow account mechanism which guarantees also that uh, all generation companies are paid fully every month. So each 25th, the 25th of each month, they get fully their uh, payments for um, supplied electricity. And also we have some other uh, like um, incentives, which is the, the, the last one I mentioned. This is not only for renewable energy, but for uh, different uh, sectors in investments. So there is a VAT payment uh, like holidays for three years. Uh, there are also many other small incentives uh, I don't want to right now to mention, but if you are interested, we can uh, talk later. So this is a list of documents, and this is not all documents that uh, enforce renewable energy priorities, the pri uh, renewable energy prioritization by the government. And the recent uh, document was like a, a month ago, uh, it came from the parliament. And this is uh, uh, amendment to the law on energy, and amendment to the law on renewable energy and energy efficiency. I want, to say, I want to mention that we started prioritizing this area in 2001 with the low energy and uh, 2004 was important because the parliament 
uh, adapted uh, low on energy efficiency renewable energy. So uh, this is summary of renewable energy potential. Of uh, this is like pessimistic assessment or like we don't want to show a lot. You can see that in reality we have much more solar and uh, Professor Karan also mentioned about that. But we put here just what is, uh, for what we have resources, for what we have financing and investors express their uh, like willingness, get license, etc. Um, I like this uh, diagram very much. So this is renewable energy supply curve. Here we can compare all uh, technologies on one curve. So how much will cost electricity uh, from, for example, a power free farm biogas or geothermal or a solar PV or carafage. And this line shows um, which type of financing is used. So green one is for fully commercial from Armenian banks. This is, as I mentioned, like 14%, 15% interest for three years or four years maximum. And the lawyer is for concessional or soft loans, which is like 10% and for eight, 10 years. So in average, you can see that the solar PV uh, which was not possible to implement like three years ago or five years ago, now uh, becomes more um, competitive and that is very good because uh, although we have many renewable energy sources, but the solar is prevailing and it is strategic for us. So this shows not only cost, not only technologies, but also scale up potential. So you see this, the biggest is um, distributed PV, which is the most expensive, but uh, at the same time, it is there is a potential for um, uh, for extension, for, uh, but the market is really uh, big. And I, as, as I mentioned, we put very like uh, pessimistic numbers here. Um, we have, for example, for biogas, it is not very strategic for Armenia. Also, we have very good tariff, feeding tariff now established. Like we, we have uh, 10 cents established now feeding tariff, but the cost of uh, cost is like uh, less than um, four cents. So, which means that you can make a profit if you invest here, but the volume or market is really limited. So I prepared some uh, information on different resources, potentials. So this is wind, small hydropower plant, uh, distributed solar, pump storage hydropower. This is of course not renewable energy, but it is very important for regulate regulation of renewable energy. And uh, could you go back to the solar? Sorry. The, the previous slide, the solar. What do you consider distributed? You know, Distribu when we say distributed solar, we mean rooftop solar, like or uh, so uh, solar which is uh, for autonomous use, okay, like uh, not large scale, not uh, industrial. Yeah. So those are per city. Sorry. Those are per city. You think that uh, that's yeah. the potential? It is by rooftops? by Mars. It is by regions, Mars. So. Uh, uh, there is uh, like the estimate of the roof, like um, square meters of the roof, but it is like uh, also pessimistic because we haven't done any like technical expert of all roofs, but we consider that one third is uh, okay for like, uh, installations. Um, actually, uh, this is biogas to power uh, from wastewater. I just want to show, and when you will have questions, we can come back. But uh, as I mentioned, these slides are more for reference, and uh, if you are interested on in this. This is landfill gas to power. Currently, we have one landfill, which can be easily uh, is used for uh, getting power in Nubarashen uh, landfill. 
So we have biomass, uh, we have geothermal energy resources. Uh, coming to renewable heat, this is also very important for Armenia because currently we use the natural gas and as price increases, people are, uh, they are stopping usage of natural gas and starting uh, uh, wood, using wood, especially when they, uh, in the regions near the forest. This is disaster for Armenia because we have less than 10% of territory is forest. So uh, this is, I mean, uh, this is RX issue, but uh, we are very um, uh, interested to get something. And that's why we are now also promoting heat pump uh, options, which is not very common in Armenia, but it, it has potential for uh, extension. And also solar water heating is becoming more and more uh, common in, in Armenia. So, and uh, I want to uh, tell you about the technologies that were discussed with stakeholders, with many conferences uh, in Armenia, and we selected two main technologies and put uh, it in the investment plan, submitted to the climate investment funds and get money for this project. So we call it SREP, this is scaling up renewable energy uh, program in low-income countries. So you can Google it and find uh, more information on that. Um, this is specific uh, program under climate investment funds and the U.S. government is also a uh, contributing country. The main purpose is to increase renewable energy generation. This is not the case where we talk about decrease or uh, reduction of emissions, but just increase usage. So one of the sub-components, and, and I forgot to mention, we, uh, our investment plan was uh, approved by the Board of Climate Investment Funds uh, in 2014, and we received $40 million uh, like, uh, soft or concessional financing, from which 28, uh, from which uh, 26 is loan with 0.25% for 40 years maturity. And the rest is grant financing. So one of them, one of the project is Geothermal Exploratory Drilling Program. We put $9 million to explore to a site named Karkar. It is in Sunik region. And currently, at this moment, the drilling works are but we come to this not very easily, so we did a lot of uh, surveys from uh, in, uh, starting from 2009. So we did the uh, geological survey to be and, um, in Karkar and Klitzor regions, and the most uh, promising site was selected for further development, and Karkar had better data. And we did three-dimensional uh, magnetotelluric sounding in uh, Karkar region. And the interpretation uh, showed that it is really promising and we can uh, start drilling. So I can't say that I understand everything here, So, but uh, it is uh, very uh, interesting. So it's, uh, now we are working on the mentioned site. And these are results, and it is expected that uh, we can have some resources uh, in the in, uh, within 1,200 to 1,500 meters. And our drilling program is about 1,500 uh, 1, meters. So, uh, and after that, two main uh, two like exploratory well location were selected. And one, if we drill and we found some good result, mm -hmm. then we will uh, invite investors to build a uh, power plant there. So it is 3,000 meter above sea level, and we constructed already uh, access road there, like 20 kilometer of road where it was constructed uh, last season. And season is very short. 
So in June, we still have snow there, and in November, uh, it is snowing. So uh, we have to do all our works during uh, this uh, four or five months. So this is the last. The uh, next. What's the temperature of the? Expected temperature. So expected temperature based on interpretation, because you, uh, the, this, all these surveys, they don't give certainty. I mean, and we expect to have like no more than 120 or 30. So if, if more, then it's better. Uh, if no, like uh, if it is more than 90 degrees, still we can think about binary technology, not flash technology, but for binary, it is possible to think and use. Uh, this is, this is the question. Your units are Celsius. Sorry? When you say temperature like 130 degrees, you mean 130 degrees Celsius. Celsius, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, Celsius. Uh, and uh, for that, the, the actually the tariff will be important. If it is uh, lower, then maybe steel, and, but still uh, suitable for power uh, generation then we have to do feasibility study to understand what will be tariff. If it is still good for our system, then the decision will be to continue. And uh, another important thing is that uh, geothermal is important for Armenia because it, it is base load generation, which means that it is not fluctuating like the solar or wind. So uh, many people said that Armenia can uh, have only renewable. Others said that we can't have only renewables because uh, it is fluctuating and it will be not easy for the system to survive. But geothermal is a power which is uh, very uh, sustainable 24 of the year. So come next project is solar power. This is picture of our school. So uh, this is the recent solar map, uh, and uh, this is the first time we publicly show this, uh, because uh, this map is based on satellite data, based on long-term hydrometeor data. Uh, and uh, this is uh, done by a Spanish company, FRG, or uh, we hired them to do resource assessment. And uh, so it shows the best areas for PV, I mean solar, uh, actually solar irradiation. And here is the map of PV yield, uh, so also pre uh, prepared by this company for us. Uh, but in addition to this uh, satellite mapping uh, for uh, solar for Armenia, we also do ground-based uh, monitoring. So we, pr uh, we purchase our fund, we purchase four uh, set of uh, measurement stations, uh, and we allocate it in different regions of Armenia. And uh, you see that these are the most the, the, um, recent technology. Uh, so we can have very reliable data for investors. So this is scheme, how it works. This is uh, actual photo of uh, one of our trainings because whatever we do, we want to train people in Armenia to get this knowledge from, for example, in this case from Spanish company, uh, producer of this type of uh, measurement stations, uh, in order to have uh, the capacity pink hunting continue the same type of measurements uh, in different, in other uh, sites. So, uh, some reasons also that we can uh, implement um, scale up or uh, sustainable energy de uh, development because uh, this is the third time I'm saying that we have legal regulatory institutional framework. We have private sector inter uh, interested. Uh, we have financial market interested and capital to lend for renewable energy investments. The scientific community and academia remain committed and interested in uh, geothermal and solar, spe especially solar technologies. And we have strong ecological or environmental society that requires scale up of sustainable energy uh, and usage of solar resources instead of other 
And also we have uh, different donor uh, and international financing institutions that, that uh, they want to uh, give financing and finance uh, project with private sector in, in Armenia. Uh, yeah, question is as regarding for the solar panels, do you import them or you make them? Uh, as I mentioned, um, we have uh, uh, we have just started the project, and uh, in Armenia also we have this big solar resource. But due to technology prices, uh, it was not possible to develop really a large scale solar. And uh, this is now we have this chance to uh, install and start new, uh, really and use this uh, chance to. Uh, solar programs. What we are going to do under ESRE, uh, we develop six uh, feasibility studies, six sites. Overall capacity is like about uh, 90 megawatt in all together. And for first three, uh, we will announce a tender uh, for investors. We invite investors uh, and uh, uh, Will come, uh, whoever will give a lawyer tariff or lawyer offer <coughs> will be awarded PPA for 20 years according to the tariff he off they offer. So uh, the rest, like uh, who will import from what country, etc., uh, etc., et is uh, is uh, liability or, or obligation or liability or freedom of uh, in investor. However, there will be certain specifications or st certain requirements on efficiency because the government provides cheap financing and uh, we want to have some sustainability and be sure that at least uh, for several years, like 20 years, we will get this energy from that resources. So uh, this is what I prepared. Um, uh, I want to... Well, I uh, really. Interesting. Uh, now that you heard all this, I'd like to let you know that in addition to what Tamara says, if you are in Armenia toward the end of September, they have their semi uh, every every other year they have this conference that is about the renewable energy and energy so resources in Armenia. That if you're there, I'm sure uh, you're welcome to attend. Uh, it's when uh, September. Uh, uh, the conference will be uh, will start uh, September 29th and uh, 20, uh, 29, 30, and October one. Okay. And uh, in parallel, it will be exhibition. So you are also invited to show your products, services, etc. And uh, participation is free of charge, uh, of course. And then, uh, what I want to mention that. Uh, uh, Previous three days, we have opportunity also to learn more about solar PV technologies with Dr. Gevorkian, who will visit Armenia these days and will uh, do a specific session in uh, American University of Armenia. And then, of course, uh, in our, we will take part in our conference, uh, and we are going also to have very specific investor conference or in pre bid conference for solar PV. Companies. So if you are interested, uh, uh, please. Uh, so in other words, if you're in, uh, in Armenia you in those can, days. Our yeah, website is here. You can just send a message and say that you are interested. I can give you business card or other materials about uh, like uh, investment in Armenia, etc. So, so there's like almost a week that uh, Peter you're working on that you probably all know because he also gave us a lecture here uh, was last year. Last year he gave us a lecture about it. So he's a renowned known uh, uh, specialist in uh, uh, solar and he gives that training for a few days. And uh, I've been in this conference before a few years ago. It's very informative and you will learn a lot or you will be exposed. And I say, if you're interested in uh, investing in Armenia in this uh, field, this is the place to be because you will meet a lot of people there. So with that, okay, Sarkis, we'll let you answer your <laughs> question. Go ahead. Well, one of them is uh, from you. Will Parson be interested in going there? No, it's a too small market. It's not a strategic market for us. That's been our higher ups. When each time I approached them, that's what they told me. It's not Armenia. It's not a strategic market for us. I've not been able to 
overcome that. I have hard one more question for Tamar. Well, uh, we'll start the audience it's question. It's 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 what it's happens it's to me? Do you represent uh, Armenian government or a private sector? Which one? Uh, we, are, uh, we are not private sector. We are a uh, foundation. Our legal status is a foundation. It is something like quasi-government because we have been established by the government of Armenia. Uh, and our board of trustees, uh, trustee consists of the governmental uh, officials, like deputy minister level, and private sector, and NGO. So we are independent formally from the government. Our resources are our resources. We don't, uh, we are not paid. Where your like, budget comes from? Uh, our budget comes from different projects implemented by fund, like World Bank, uh, uh, World Bank Finance, GM Finance, and I, as I mentioned, we have sustainable renewable uh, revolving fund. And the margin of interest, like some portion of this interest charge, uh, goes to our operational budget and uh, <coughs> finance also other activities. Plus, we also provide consulting services to other institutions. Because now we gain this knowledge during these 10 years, and now uh, different foreign and local foreign, mainly foreign companies, they hired us to provide services. Currently, for example, we do uh, like energy audit of metro. Okay, and said it's not. Uh, excuse me, let, let's, let's, let's uh, put the questions more, on it now. Question, excuse me, excuse me, let, no. I'm a contractor, electrical contractor. I'm planning, for example, come over Armenia, install, uh, do some business, uh, like put the solar that I, I do here. How is the uh, opportunity? How government is? You said there is no permit, there is no uh, regulation. It means uh, everybody can take a wire from one place and put another place. There is no licensing. How they regulate this? When I say when I said there is uh, no regulation, I mean that uh, if you as a as a resident or a business office NGO. If you want to buy and put solar PV on your roof, so you just buy it, put it on the roof, and you have to go to the electrical network, you have utilities, sign a contract, and uh, according to that contract, you will get electricity if you need it, uh, when you need it, and you can uh, transfer electricity you produce to the grid. So. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> That's enough. We have other people who are answering questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. Two quick questions and an offer. One, why was Zarabal not included in that Spanish company's study while they were at it? Two, uh, I forgot. And three, the comment is if you want the English cleaned up on your presentation, give me the text. I'll send it to you. They can redo it. Sorry, yeah, second question. I didn't, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back. Okay, uh, uh, actually, uh, since the... Oh, I, sorry, have security concerns been taken into consideration in, in looking at non-distributed solar? Because I'm imagining something very fragile that could get bombed by our very friendly neighbors. Has that okay. aspect been addressed at all? Um, okay. Or am I out of line and even worrying about it? I understand. It? So, first question is uh, Nagorno Karabakh. Uh, since the project is financed by international organization like World Bank, they don't uh, want to see another map. But non formally, uh, this is not for record, but non formally, we requested and Spanish uh, company provided us also for Karabakh. So, this is not for protocol, like minutes. Uh, the second question about bombing. Bombing. I mean, the solar is the most safe because we can remove the part and still have something. Mr. Gerard can know that. I mean, they can bump I think, anything. So I understand. Care, the solar uh, being an, a big I array, is, I, I that's not a concern? But in this, uh, if we think about this, I say <coughs> the most safe is solar PV because they can bump thermal. You, you just. Uh, you can do that, and for recovery, you need another three years or something. If they can bomb nuclear, they can bomb anything. But for solar, recovery will take like three months or six months, depending on damage. So this is also a very good question. I will put like the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, I think I saw price at 19 cents per kilowatt hour. 
We pay less in California with Jerry Brown and everybody else there. Yeah. Don't pay less, by the way. I said that, uh, yes, thank you. This is also a very important question. Uh, you know, on, in all the projects we implemented, our fund implements, we put not very like optimistic, even not realistic data. We try to put pessimistic scenario. And if it is cheaper, then everybody is happier. So we put 19 cents on rooftop solar because Armenia is another country. We are landlocked. We can't use uh, for, uh, like, uh, we can't use sea for transportation. We can't see railway for transportation. Everything is air or through Georgian border. So we have to have it in mind. And the second is that first project risk is always there. So maybe next year it will be cheaper. The consumers pay 19 cents a per kilowatt. No, it was the uh, uh, consumers now, they pay uh, about 10 cents. Is there any monopoly like that? Uh, you know, if I go to Armenia, can I import solar panels or some person or company has already monopolized that business? Um, actually, uh, we don't have any monopoly. Uh, Moreover, we don't have uh, like uh, companies uh, serious, seriously involved in PV business. This is new market. As I mentioned, we recently had this uh, regulatory improvement, and uh, there is an interest. All people they, they want to install, but really we don't we can't find companies to to import and install. I don't think you will have issues there, but uh, even if you have some, um, I, uh, where you have need to, to get support, etc., we can help, we can support in that. In that. How you can support? Excuse me, sir. No, I will uh, answer your question again. No, but I want to next question is coming from here. Please do not disturb anymore. Why? Why? How she can support? I'm contractor going there. Put Sir, the money, would you please and I know stop? That, I know that there is a monopoly and how they can support. I'm going there and asking her to help how she can help me. Because a lot Just of try and I, uh, you will and see how. <laughs> Why don't you ask her such a detailed question? Afterwards. I'm going to suggest you talk to her afterwards. Yeah. Ask, her yes. no, yes. ask her after yes. words on your own time, not on our time. Because we're not a contractor going to Armenia with. Well, let, let's. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's go. Enough is enough. You you mentioned the Barashel landfill. Yeah. I haven't been in Armenia for 20 years. In my last visit to Armenia, I visited the Barashel landfill. And I was scared to death. It is still scary. <laughs> <laughs> now, my next question is, actually, there are a couple of questions related to each other. How is in Yerevan organized trash refuse collection and separation? Would you please answer to this question? Yeah. Um, Can you repeat the question again, please? Pardon? I will repeat. Yeah, I will repeat. repeat. The first, uh, first uh, the question is uh, uh, regarding landfill in Yerevan, particularly uh, Nubarashen, and the status of this landfill, and uh, how waste collection is currently set up in Yerevan. Uh, well, good news uh, here because uh, last year uh, the, the, all this trash collection was uh, outsourced uh, to the private company um, from, I guess, from Syria or I, I, I don't remember, but it, it is not Armenian based, but they came to Armenia and now it is organized in quite, uh, quite well. Way. So about separation, I can't tell you that we, we have this, but because uh, uh, there is no s facility or production or uh, this kind of separation. However, there are small businesses that collect certain type of waste. They sort just uh, with this uh, uh, landfill and with this trash company but it is not very, uh, really basically it is nothing. So the separation so far is not done. Uh, but the, the landfill in Yerevan, um, as you know, the Shimizu Corporation, Japanese, I mean, 
if you know, uh, Japanese Shimizu Corporation, uh, under Kyoto Protocol, they invest money to uh, to get the, the methane, so methane capturing facility is now there, constructed and operational, uh, which uh, allows to, I mean, which allow to clean um, most of the territory of the landfill. But the part of it is still in no very good condition. Uh, so uh, another news uh, on this issue that is that government recently applied, approved and applied for financing of uh, improvement of and construction of five uh, big landfills in different regions, which is according to European standards, etc. Building with what? Landfills. Plants? Landfills. 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 Landfills, yes. Different in different Marses, different regional uh, different regional landfills. So and it is supported by uh, European funds. They give uh, not only credit but also grants to set up and reduce these uh, emissions. Just for an information, uh, there is a fellow who's from here, works for the city of LA. He went to Armenia. And there is a project going on to study what is, how they can design safe landfills. Uh, I'll ask him to give us a lecture, uh, but because the project is not over yet and results are not finalized, there's not being, but hopefully in the near future we'll have this fellow from CWL who went there and worked with some group there. They're establishing uh, requirements and specifications for the safe landfills for Armenia. Uh, yes. From uh, all the renewable energy sources that you mentioned, specifically solar, geothermal, and um, what, was the, what was the other one? Wind, uh, are you simultaneously <coughs> developing these projects together, or is it in phases that you're trying to implement? Thank you. Uh, geothermal and solar, they are going in parallel. Uh, small hydro, uh, we have, uh, we, I mean, we have already success stories and it can be replicated in other countries. So we don't, now we don't put efforts to develop uh, small hydro because it's market ready, market driven. So it, it is, uh, without, even without our intervention, it goes very well. Uh, another big resource we have is on wind resources, but this is very specific because we have only several point, uh, places, several sites where we have resource, but also due to the same condition of the logistics, like transportation of wind turbine lines, etc., etc. Also, we have a quite good tariff, like uh, about 10 cents uh, without VAT. Uh, we don't uh, have really, and also to, we have investors, uh, they apply, they get licenses, but they are still uh, discussing and not installing. So, because the mainly due to these logistics issues and transportation, etc. But there is a feeding tariff, so they can just install. They they have already a license, and they can start the construction generation. So, I'm sorry. Oh, so, which one would be the primary source of energy that is the best turnaround for investment? Uh, since geothermal is not yet um, approved, I mean, we don't know the results of the, like, uh, uh, drilling, and uh, we will have this uh, by the end of this year, and maybe this will be really good. Uh, if we compare technologies worldwide, geothermal is good because capacity factor is uh, more than 85%, because the operation hours are really but uh, solar PV for Armenia is uh, strategic. We have very good resources. Mainly these resources uh, on the map you can see are in mountainous areas, are near the Sevan, which is uh, uh, higher elevations and cleaner and uh, cooler. Uh, and this is very important for us, a PV cell. Uh, in continuation to my first question, I understand that landfills are used for to produce methane gas, and this this is long process. Why Armenia is not not looking to build waste to energy plants? In the past, there were a couple of, I'd say. Yeah, 
I understand your question. Uh, cases when Japanese people of Japanese companies and Italian companies, they were, they came to Armenia to build these kind of plants. So what happened? Um, uh, actually, as uh, as I mentioned in our weaknesses, the small market. For example, for the uh, Lubarashen resource, it was developed by Shimizu, Japanese. They, they did the project, but they haven't constructed power plant because it is only for 3 megawatt. But for 3 megawatt, they have to install all this stuff, etc., etc. So they prefer to just burn methane just to reduce emissions and get their credits uh, under Kyoto Protocol. However, uh, we in, in all these new landfills I mentioned, they right now in the design, they put the, op the possibility to construct like if like three, five years later, some technology will be uh, for smaller scale, it is possible to construct. But all discussions we have and government is I mean, uh, this is specifically Ministry of Ter Territorial Administration, not Ministry of Energy, but they are looking for all technologies to have waste to energy. If you have some kind of technology uh, that can be used uh, for relatively smaller scale, like the one quarter of Armenia or one fifth of Armenia, so I just welcome and uh, we will organize all necessary meetings and discussions with the government to that. I mean, the, the, no issue. Uh, I have Archive, my comments Archive, about Archive, this. Okay, okay thank question. you. So you said the high transition was owned by state. I'm assuming the balancing authority is the state. Uh, so um, if we describe like energy system, we all generation uh, facilities are private except nuclear power plant and one thermal. Others are all private. A uh, high voltage network or a transmission company is publicly owned and operated. Utilities distribution is also private. And we have two institutions, uh, resettlement center and dispatching center, which are also state owned. And uh, we have uh, like a um, computerized automatic system to uh, dispatch, uh, to um, regulate this dispatching and billing systems. So that's what I'm asking. So the system stability is uh, yeah. provided by the state. Are there any demand response programs that they can activate a function to ensure balance and how do they interact with the distribution network? Um, if you, I mean, uh, the question is uh, very technical. I, uh, I'm not an expert in this, but maybe if you clarify. Any, yeah, any can they, I mean, the demand response typically can take customers offline. Mm -hmm. Usually automatic, is there anything like that? It's cost I don't know. We have cost cut. 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 Yeah. Surger Arnum, I think a base line in Petka Barza, I think Cascadi Pana, Jamanaka, Tasna, Utvarjana Garzan. I think I make a power of peak Pana in Carmen of the ramp rate, the ramp of the man, the shadow bonnet, the nut. So, uh, according to our rules, like for distribution company, how it, they have to take electricity, the like prioritization. So first of all, if nuclear is operational, then nuclear is the first because of safety, etc. Then uh, renewables come, hydro, small hydro, uh, wind, etc. And the closing is a thermal power plant in Raznan. So Raznan is operational if there is a deficit. So this is the how it uh, works. Uh, and also the prices, the highest price is Raznan. Like the closing balance. Um, and then the nuclear pays the same price than the highest price, right? Always. Like nuclear is the cheapest option. I know, but when it comes to if you no, have there to is no peak tariff. Oh, there is no there peak is no peak low tariff. tariff. Thank you. Armenia has more capacity right now than demand. Mm -hmm. They're trying to find customers for their uh, yeah. Iran and uh, yeah, and we Georgia and all that. So, so there is that, that situation that we're having here blackouts and uh, rollouts that we have today or yesterday. They, they don't, it doesn't exist. So the issue is not capacity, the issue is no. dependence on the right. field. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, 
So for a related question, does Armenia have an equivalent uh, integrated resource plan? And um, sort of a related question to that is, are the future nuclear plans going to be competitively critical, or are they presumed to be government-owned? Um, thank you. So um, first question of for this uh, integration to the regional network is one of the uh, direction or strategy moment, uh, point of uh, energy security strategy. So <clears throat> currently we uh, construct new pipe, a new line, transmission uh, line to Georgian border. So this is la larger capacity to Georgian border, to Iran, in order to uh, have also this transit uh, of the electricity from one country to another. Uh, as I mentioned, we all these years, we uh, like last five years or more, we export electricity to Iran. We import gas from Iran and uh, we, uh, send electricity to them. And also with Georgia, uh, we have a very interesting um, uh, um, like uh, trade with Georgia because they, they have a, a lot of hydro resources and their um, tariff is low. I mean, th there is no the same regulation as in Armenia, so they have to. Uh, bid to sell the electricity and very often it is cheap in Georgia so they prefer to sell it to Armenia. So although we don't need this, there is no deficit, but still we buy cheap electricity in order to have a better like uh, structure and then we export <coughs> to Iran. Uh, another question? Uh, what are the nuclear plants? The ah, nuclear ones. power plant. Uh, actually, the nuclear power plant is uh, construction is of course in the low, so it is it is in the plans, uh, but at the same time financing uh, issues and the uh, revenue level and uh, tariff current tariff uh, for nuclear will be higher. So government doesn't right now we don't do like something on direction, but more we uh, we work on financing of security improvement of the current power plant. Mm -hmm. But in terms of public or private, I can say that uh, the government is open for both options because mm -hmm. even for foreigners, it is now open. So uh, in the law on nuclear power, I mean, uh, there is also uh, amendment to the law which says that owner can be foreign, like, uh, Investor or company? Majority. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because there was the new Minister of Energy that came and now the administration is supportive of what RTE is doing. Do you think that came and now the administration is supportive of what RTE is doing? Yeah. I didn't repeat the question. Yeah, the new minister uh, is appointed. Uh, I forgot to mention that uh, the movie was from last year, so a new minister uh, was appointed. Mr. Levon uh, Yolian. Uh, I have to mention that the, um, the ministers, recent ministers, they are becoming more and more like uh, to, to, to us, they are becoming more supportive to our fund and our ideas. Uh, this is partially because we are now, uh, of course, we. They, they also see how we operate and how we work and uh, results, successful results. At the same time, they understand that the, the issues, the problems of the energy sector can be solved using renewable energy. Because, for example, when we uh, were discussing with the Ministry of Energy like six years ago or seven years ago, and we are arguing that we need solar PV development, uh, to secure our independence, our like uh, the argument was like uh, the gas is much cheaper and uh, solar is too expensive. But we say okay, but the gas will become more expensive. But it was difficult to argue. So gas now they problem. now they it is proved that it became uh, and they they are forced to increase tariff not for solar but for <laughs> gas generation. So. Uh, now government and uh, uh, I want to say that this minister also and uh, uh, even president now they if, if we uh, hear speeches high of like high level officials like five years ago nobody mentioned 
only nuclear was in, in agenda. Now, more and more, we hear that solar renewable should be developed. So what? Uh, if it, it, there's an oversupply, why is it uh, investment in energy is uh, good? Uh, very good question. We have uh, two reasons for that, if not more. First of all, we have generation capacities in Armenia uh, from Soviet time, so we have to replace it with new ones. It's better to replace with renewable than with traditional or uh, gas-based or something. This is first, so in order to not have deficit in like 10 years period. Because we say that we are going to close current nuclear in 2026, but maybe it will be even, I mean, for certain reasons, it can be stopped earlier. So we have to think about so this. A, as a replacement of As a replacement of current, and plus as a replacement with own resources. Renewable resources, which is cleaner, which is ours, and uh, less import. And this is for cash, uh, country cash balance also. Uh, going back to the issue of waste management and landfills, are there any efforts right now aimed at recycling? Because, I mean, I know that's a behavioral issue going individually, home by home, but I think that's the only way to have any kind of possibility from waste to power uh, conversion or to alleviate all the waste that's going to landfills? The, the waste to energy is really uh, very interesting because I'm, also it is not just right our <coughs> issue, but uh, we explored all opportunities during these years. So first of all, this recyc uh, recycling or reusing or, uh, is a uh, specifics of Armenia is that we have really low waste. I mean, households, they buy whatever they need because of social security, etc. They don't buy much. They, if they will spend like one piece of bread, they usually they buy one piece of bread. Second, recycling goes to the like uh, na neighborhood. What is if uh, someone keeps animals, like uh, chicken, so that they feed their <laughs> animals with this, uh, what is usable. Uh, what is paper or some wood, they keep it for some horobots. For plastic, plastic is the most uh, expensive thing. Plastic they collect plastic and they re re uh, reuse. There are several uh, like uh, small businesses, etc. They do uh, something for pipe, pipe, pipes, etc. And glasses too. And glasses also. They collect also glasses. So that's why when, for example, ATP uh, started this preparation of waste. Uh, strategy, waste to energy, or something like that. They understood that in, in, in case of Armenia, the waste uh, out of household, I mean, the waste in the household and waste in the landfill are really different. So, more expensive part of waste stays here, not in the landfill. Uh, how long uh, the existing plant, the uh, bigger plant, going to remain operational? Uh, until 2026. Uh, two last questions, Claudia, and then so. Uh, Go ahead, he has enough. Oh, um, given the storage issues with renewables, do we have in Armenia any expertise, any research going on for battery technology, or is that not something that our institutions have? Um, and I don't know about uh, researches on battery. Maybe in academia or some <coughs> research institutions they work on that. Uh, we, but we have visibility studies for uh, uh, pump storage hydro. So you, you've seen there is a visibility study. There is a three potential places where we can use and it is feasible to construct. Last question. Uh, so. Thank you for your presentation. We, we've been hearing a lot about uh, electricity generation. I'm just curious if, if there's anything regarding uh, heating. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, I, uh, so uh, for 
generation of heat from renewable energy. The question was like about the uh, opportunity or possibility. Uh, currently, the, m the main alternative to the uh, gas or other uh, fossil fuel or wood uh, is uh, solar water heating uh, used by households, but uh, it is in sep only in separate buildings or in uh, different like villages. And in some hotels, they started using this culture, but mainly they use it for hot water. For heating, it is not always applicable because uh, you know we have uh, very cold winters, and very often uh, you have to heat the solar heater. So that's uh, the issue. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, heat pump is becoming uh, interesting, but uh, there is no supplier. So this is also open market for those who want to start business uh, in Armenia. Well, uh, I know there are a lot of questions, uh, but uh, it's kind of getting late, and uh, well, I think this is a great place. Thank you for Tamara. Let's keep it up. Razvik has a couple of announcements, uh, and uh, Razvik? Uh, I want to thank you very much for a very interesting and uh, lively lecture and question and answer session. Who is uh, this? <coughs> the, uh, the Armenian Engineers and Scientists of America organization is 33 years old. What we would like to do and do strongly and do a good job at it is to try to create a database. We're in the process of doing that. We have some databases. However, I encourage people, contractors, with all respect, and others who have businesses to share their business uh, or register somehow with, uh, with us in terms of having the database so the database can be shared with institutions like R2E2 or other governmental institutions or entities that we uh, folks in the states can potentially find businesses, find contracts. So if we have, the, if AESA has this pool of, of, of all the business owners and so on and so forth, we do get your names from the mailing list. I mean, um, the, uh, the sign-up sheets. The sign-up sheet doesn't tell you the whole story. It gives you partial. So anybody who has a business, especially an Armenian-owned business, please share that information with us. And in the future, little by little, as we collect this data, we can put it to good use. Uh, thank you for your attendance. Uh, it was a very lively lecture. And I do have uh, a, a nice announcement for people who are interested to continue mingling with our speaker and some of the other uh, individuals here, we are um, inviting you to attend to a, uh, uh, to a bar for uh, some uh, nice good time. It's called Rathskeller and uh, it's located at 72 North Faroes, not too far from here. Um, it's just a walking distance. You walk towards Colorado and that's where it's at. It's across, I'm sorry, across, across the street from Colorado at 72 North Fair Oaks. Very short, distance. very short distance. So we can, we'd love to have a few people, if, if not all. So uh, we'll have some more conversations, and I'm sure there are issues and questions that you could further ask. You reach your yes. <laughs>